everyone. Welcome back, or if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Tiffany, and I'm a chronically ill and disabled booktuber. I'm a little bit late to the party since this readathon started on May 1st, but I've just found out about the Spoonie readathon and have decided to take part. If you don't know what the Spoonie readathon is, it's a readathon focused on chronically ill and disabled authors and characters. The Spoon Theory was created by a woman named Christine Miserandino, who was at a diner with her friend and was trying to explain what her life felt like living with lupus. She grabbed a handful of spoons and talked about how her pain and fatigue wear away at her energy and stamina. And some days she has more spoons than others. And sometimes she overexerts herself and basically steals spoons from the future can lay her up for longer periods of recovery time. So I'm a Spoonie, and so I felt naturally this was a good readathon to join in. If you want to know the details, including the co-host and the reading prompts, I'll link them in the description box below. Even though there are prompts, because this is a kind of a last minute join, I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants and pick up books that I already had around. The first book I picked up is on my Kindle and it is a book called Sitting Pretty by Rebecca Tausig. This is a memoir written in essay forms about her personal lived experience uh, living with a disability. She is paralyzed and uses a wheelchair. She also has a PhD in disability studies and is a disability advocate. She talks about what it's like to grow up disabled and also what she's learned the more she's pursued disability in academic settings. She explains some of the theories like the social and medical models of disability. Medical model says that the person with the disability is defective. They're broken, there's something wrong, and it's on them. The social model, the social model of disability talks about this person cannot do something because of barriers we've put in place. How can we remove these barriers and be accommodating and inclusive? Which I think is a much better way to go about it. She talks about how inclusivity and accommodations really help everyone. She gave an example of a video game controller, which was adaptive. And she talks about how they were designed for disabled people in mind, but new people with maybe less than stellar hand-eye coordination can benefit from these kinds of controllers as well. Her writing is so poignant and I have been taking endless notes. What she writes really resonates with me. I relate to her even though we've had different lived experiences. One of the passages that I have highlighted was when she was talking about dating her teenage boyfriend. And even though she realized she didn't love him, she refused to break up with him believing that nobody else would date her because of her disability. So the guy's name is Sam. Sam's love for me felt like a great fluke, a crack in the laws of the universe. And if I didn't jump at the chance for romance, that would be it. Poof, no love for you. She talks about disabled people feel like they should just accept the scraps, that they should just, that they deserve less than other people. That also makes them much more vulnerable to abuse. But the people in this position are vulnerable and they risk their day-to-day -day care if they speak out. This isn't a problem that can get fixed overnight, but it's it's hard. This is heavy subjects to, to see how much further our society really needs to come. Don't worry though, it is not all doom and gloom. I picked up The Chance to Fly by Ali Stroker and Stacey Davidowitz. This is a middle grade novel focusing on Nat. She is 13 and just moved cross country with her parents. She is living in a wheelchair and loves musicals so much. I love musicals. I love all the references and the puns and the jokes that I can catch. So if you like musicals, I think you'll like this as well. She gets the opportunity to try out for Wicked and this is her first time ever being in a play. And her parents are really nervous because they don't know what kind of accommodations she will need in this setting. They don't really know anybody that they feel like they could trust to help her out. But 
she's gung ho. She she loves musicals. She's loving becoming a theater kid and making friends. I've only read the first six chapters, but I've already been swept away. This is really fun to read. One of the authors, Ali Stroker, is a person using a wheelchair who was able to perform on Broadway. And she's even won a Tony Award. I would love it if she would sing the lyrics in the audiobook, but that's a tiny quibble. And last but not least, I picked up Marvels, Mania, Depression, Michelangelo, and Me by Ellen Forney. This chronicles her journey of being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She explores the connection between being an artist and being mentally ill. She fights the idea of medication because she's really concerned that it'll limit her creativity. She's drawn inspiration from other people in history who have had known mood disorders. Well, the black and white cartoon style isn't my favorite. This has been a very insightful and honest look into her mental illness. And I'm really hoping that this will help reduce stigma because it's still, it's still there, unfortunately. I will let you know my full thoughts to all of these books when I have my end of month wrap up. Are you interested in reading any of these books? Are you going to participate in the Spoonie Readathon? There's still time. It goes all the way to the end of the month. If you have any recommendations for books with chronic illness and disability represented, let me know down in the comments below. Even after the readathon's over, I still put these books in my reading diet all year long. So if you found this well after it's published, that's okay. Still want recommendations. I'd love to hear what you're reading. Thank you for joining. Bye.